For staying with us, you're welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. It is that time when we are shining our first guest, and today we're talking about Dr. Lubwenga Samuel Fale, who is chairman and chief executive officer of Saglev Incorporated, a top scientist majoring in electric cars. We now want to ask him, among other things, how investors like him can key into Nigeria's and Africa's growth and how renewable energy and green climate can hold the key to continent's future. Good morning, Dr. Fale. Good morning, Steve. Good morning. Thank it's you for to having me. Good morning. Good uh, to have you in the studio. Later. Thank All you right. so much. Yeah. I mean, did you, I, I, I know that we'll, we'll be talking a lot about um, electric cars. Did you, did you come in one? Yes, I did. Oh, you did? Fact, yes. I oh, did. really? Absolutely. Okay, so that, that's, that's a great thing. We're coming back to that. Mm -hmm. But let's start on the big picture. Uh, given the fact that uh, UNGA, United Nations General Assembly, you know, just held, uh, President Ashwajibola Metinubu was there. Uh, he made a lot of calls to people like your good selves who are, you know, I know that you are half based there, you are half based here, but to people in the diaspora, to investors, to scientists, to people who can assist in helping, you know, the, the, the nation and the continent grow. Uh, my questions to you, one is, what do you make of the call that President Tinubu made in New York, and how prepared do you think uh, that those in your class, mm. uh, investors, uh, people, either with money or who have access to money, how prepared are they to assist the Nigerian economy? Because Nigeria, at this point, needs all the assistance that it can get. Yes, uh, thank you very much. That's a very exciting question, actually. And uh, I believe uh, even though we have all these economic challenges, this is a great opportune time for the country because um, uh, the um, uh, World Bank announced that between 2015 and 2022, Nigerians in the diaspora have remitted $168 billion, with a B, U.S. Wow. dollars. Wow. That averages 21 billion U.S. dollars a year. And this is just not Nigerians in the diaspora. Mm. Some of these monies have gone to investments. Some of them have gone into just people sending money to their family members. Right. So the question of are Nigerians prepared, Nigerians in the diaspora, they've been doing this. Okay. Uh, so um, this just needs to be focused. So the president is 1,000% uh, uh, correct in... Uh, talking to the diaspora and telling them, listen, the circumstances for you to come back home are being set up to where you can be successful. I'm a testament to that. I'm not very proud because for many years I, I was not preaching this, but I am certainly preaching this that Nigerians should come back. Uh, this is potentially the greatest country in the emerging markets in sub-Saharan Africa. And, uh, uh, we have a lot to, to look forward to, and that's very possible. So again, the question, yes, uh, most definitely, one of the parts where we feel that the diaspora can really, apart from just putting in those dollars directly in yeah. areas, um, I believe in this doc doctrine of teach a man how to fish, not give him fish. Mm. Uh, and uh, this is very uh, appropriate in this situation because um, what happens is um, there is now in the renewable economy, and I'm just gonna focus on okay. electric vehicles. It's a whole um, ecosystem. It's not just the cars. The cars are the exciting, shiny object, but that's just 30%. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the charging, a lot of opportunities. You have rescue, you have um, repair service, you have the transfer of technology, you have now uh, um, uh, just marketing, you have the financial transactions that are revolved around financing electric vehicles. Okay. So the opportunities are amazing. This is a new thing that can totally expand yeah. our horizon. So the opportunities are there for people in diaspora to invest in all these areas. The good thing is, if you're anywhere, you have already seen what, what's happening in, uh, in the electric vehicle economy. Mm. In, uh, in Atlanta today, the chances are over 
50% that if you call an Uber, it's going to be a, an electric car. Really? Yes. In China today, you are not going to see a ride hailing car that is not electric. You're not going to see a taxi that is not electric. You're not going to see a, um, a public mass transport that is not electric. Mm. So uh, this is a very exciting time. And look, Nigerians are dynamic. One thing we are good at is we are going to adapt into any situation you put a, Niger a Nigerian in. That's right. So this is a wonderful time. Uh, there are certain issues around electricity that my own take. Yeah, because we were going to yes. also talk about, about yeah. that challenge. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So, so but that, that is, yeah, the diaspora can be a very, very, very uh, a vital part of that. Uh, just to direct those, uh, you know, now. Yeah. People invest in, in different things in the United States, in Great Britain, in Europe, in Eastern Europe. Yeah. So this just needs to be something they need to understand. This is safe. Yeah. This is progressive. There is opportunities to make a difference. And, uh, you know, a certain percentage of diaspora people understand they're going to come back home to some extent. Mm. So, well, when you go back home, what are you going to be doing? Yeah. Are you just going to wake up in the morning and lock yourself up in a closet and not participate in the economy? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, what I'm hearing, of course, is importantly diversification of the economy and also being able to use the potential, uh, well, I say renewable energy sources that we have. And when we look at Nigeria that has potential in renewable sources like solar and wind power, how do you envision the integration of these renewable sources into the national energy grid, particularly to support the growth of vehicles? And I'll even go further and say, how can Nigeria leverage on its natural resources, such as the abundant sunlight that we have, to further the development of these? And I'm using, you know, you said that there's so many other things, but we're just focusing on electric vehicles for now uh, and to also help sustainable transportation here in Nigeria. So that is actually a wonderful question. Uh, the truth is that um, <clears throat> when you look at the power, entire power ecosystem in Nigeria, when you follow the data, and I like to be data driven, uh, well, my training, of course, is in a specialty initially that's data driven, but you will find out that the entire production of power mm. in Nigeria has steadily increased but the percentage that is due to renewable has increased more than hydrocarbon burning. And it's the fastest growing part. Now, I was recently at the Nigeria Energy Conference. 90% of those vendors present were in renewable and solar. Mm -hmm. So what that lets us understand is that we have an opportunity. There are areas where hydrocarbon shines. CNG, diesel, petrol, but the more we increase the renewables, the more we are able to divert those things mm. to where those things shine. Mm. If we want to say, well, thermal power production is where we want to use CNG, then we can divert it to say, okay, let's say that our industrialization will improve with the hydrocarbons initially, while you know we use renewable in other areas so there's just no doubt that um this whole um, um how do we spread the you know every i'm not going to come here and tell you that hydrocarbon doesn't have a role it has its role but don't forget that even flying aeroplanes uh, our aviation uh, industry is growing, as you know, That's right. uh, but we are not going to fly them yet using electric batteries. <laughs> I wouldn't enter an electric plane okay. yet. <laughs> well, but they are coming. They are coming. So, so, again, the point is, well, you know, now maybe we can drop the price of aviation free fuel mm. and then, you know, maybe we can, we can possibly use renewable sources. And the fastest growing part, uh, you know, is uh, the renewable sources that even individuals mm. are using. Mm. Uh, battery, uh, lithium battery technology is slowly getting cheaper. So this is the easiest way to expand our power mix, let me put it that way. Yeah. All, all right. On Monday, uh, that's October 2nd, uh, you will be unveiling uh, 
Saglev, yes. the, 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 shall we say, the Nigerian electric car. Tell us about it, um, not just because uh, this is important to you, but because it is important to a lot of Nigerians. Nigerians. Electric cars are coming. I know that Lagos State government, uh, among a few others, have spoken about electric cars, mm -hmm. yeah. even for the BRT. What does that portend? First, what are you going to be showcasing on Monday? Um, what does it mean to Sheito and I and to others, for example? Why are we going to be persuaded to drop um, our cars, you know, with fuel, mm. even though we all complain on a daily basis <laughs> about the fuel price? Yes. Uh, but what does it mean in terms of investment to an individual and then investment to somebody like your good self coming from the U.S. to set this up? That is a very exciting question, and uh, stop me because this is my passion, so I can, I can go on for, for 24 hours nonstop. But, but seriously, um, after about two and a half years of just work or research in the area in West Africa, we are finally at a point where we say, listen, let us unveil what we are getting ready to do. First thing is we should start producing assembled electric vehicles by December 2023 in Lagos, Nigeria. Uh, By we December have been, 2023? Yes, and we have been wow. very quietly developing these, doing the R&D, yes, but I can, the factory is in Imota, specifically Kurudu. Kurudu. Uh, we are going to start assembling. Uh, we are now a bona fide automotive assembler in wow. Nigeria. Wow. Uh, that process has been going on in Ghana as well. We plan to be in some major markets in West Africa. So that is the level of commercialization. They say that it's difficult to keep a secret in Nigeria, <laughs> but I'm surprised how this has uh, transpired. Where we've been able to... Has no filter now. <laughs> yes, but, but yeah, so that is that. Now, having uh, said that, about Monday, what we want to do is just to show Nigerians where we are, what is coming. Uh, being already an accredited automotive manufacturer, we are going to have the very first assembly plant in the entire sub-Saharan Africa that is solely dedicated to the assembly and manufacture of electric vehicles. Wow. Others yeah. might wow. say they do EV and do other things. Yeah. That is all we do. Uh, we already, you know, we have the experience that manufacturing is in our DNA. One of our co-founders manufactures Teslas and Lucids. But that's another story. I was going to ask that. Yes. Is this, so that, is that this is in a, our is it a Nigerian Tesla? Well, yeah, let, let me put it this way. As you know, uh, it is important to encourage the man in uh, uh, Kaduna, yes. Kogi, to yes. make a car. But the knowledge of how to make a car is already in the public space. Mm. Therefore, we need to leapfrog and start from there, right? Yeah. So the knowledge of how to assemble a car is already out there. How to make electric vehicles. The knowledge is out there. It's, it's very, very, it's a democratic process. Knowledge is democratic. Mm -hmm. um, now, these days, all you need is Google, right? You can Google the technology. Now, having said that, um, the, um, we, the fastest way to build manufacturing capacity is to actually get a vehicle that is manufactured to a certain percentage yeah. and finish up the manufacturing percentage. That, in fact, saves you in the manufacturing cost mm. tremendously. Yeah. And if you want to scale, that's how you have to do it. That's why we said, this is how we're going to do it. We're not going to wait and slow ourselves down 20 years trying to make a car from scratch. That's number one. Uh, the next thing to mention is that is this the Nigerian Tesla? One day there will be a Nigerian Tesla. But, uh, you know, there are Teslas, there are Volkswagens, there are Saglevs. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the truth is that um, we are partnered with some OEMs and we have made the decision that somewhere along the line we're going to make Saglevs from scratch. What we're actually assembling are Saglev editions of the OEMs. So we have our technical agreements with three or four different OEMs, and uh, we are getting calls from other OEMs telling us, hey, we hear you guys are going to do this in Africa. We want to be in on that. So, so it's very interesting. Uh, and the other part of your question is, are electric vehicles viable? The good news is yes. Now, 
I'm an internist, I'm a doctor. I yeah. just happened to be one of those guys that could never make up their mind whether to go into medicine and you know. <laughs> I, so it turns out that I also love engineering yeah. and I was able to specialize in another part called clinical informatics, which is a part of medicine that deals with information technology. Yeah. So that's been my segue. Now having said that, the whole interest is what has led me to the fact that I've been driving electric vehicles in the United States since 2013. You know, I th drove th one of the first th tests. Yes. Wow. Uh, 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 uh. But for the last five years, I have wondered why are there not many electric vehicles being driven in Africa? And I just, that, I was always dumbfounded. Now, the truth is that Petrol was very cheap in Nigeria, for whatever the reason, fuel <laughs> subsidy. And it turned out that while a liter of petrol cost about $180, uh, sorry, Naira. Naira, it cost 850 Naira a liter in Ghana. Same thing in Cote d'Ivoire. It was not until the fuel subsidy was removed, for yeah. whatever reason, yeah. uh, um, that people realized, oh my God, that's expensive. Yeah. I have to find an alternative. That's right. So the truth is that the solution has always been there. Uh, 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 but I am so excited to be able to e get involved. When I left Nigeria, I did not think I would be useful to this country in any way. <laughs> I thought I was fleeing, but uh, so I feel blessed by that. Yeah. But having said that, yes, electric vehicles are very possible. Very, very possible mm -hmm. because I have been driving an electric vehicle in Lagos for the last three months. And uh, there's a joke I tell people, I have this big Lexus and it took me 61,000 Naira to fill it up when I had three electric vehicles. So I stopped driving it. I was like, what's wrong with me? All right, then. Yeah. Um, we, we, have, uh, we just have about two or three minutes to wrap up. So I want to just ask us a double-edged question because I'm hearing diversification of the economy. I'm hearing job creation by having that, uh, you know, uh, uh, plant set up. But I want to know wh what sets Saglev apart from other electric cars. And secondly, are there any specific policies or incentives that you believe the Nigerian government should implement to encourage the adoption of electric cars and promote renewable energy solutions? Okay. This is very exciting. Honestly, there is the National Automotive Industry Development Plan. Yeah. Started in 2014. It's just been revised in 20. Uh, in uh, 2022. All these incentives have always been the incentive for electric vehicles, incentive for manufacturers. The key thing is you have to manufacture, which is very smart, because the, 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 then you are uh, producing jobs into the economy. So yes, all this policy, uh, the, the document, you can, you can Google it, and you will see all this. So yes, the incentives are there. The policy is right. Sometimes in Nigeria, it is the implementation of the policy where we have an issue. The policy is there. They have not changed anything since we decided we're going to Nigeria a few years ago. Nothing has changed. So the incentives are there, that's number one. And number two is I tell people that, listen, um, say if you take an Uber driver that uses an electric vehicle, you can make additional three to four thousand dollars not Naira, extra a year just by using an electric vehicle. Now, because the petrol price is higher, the cost of ridership is higher, this is exactly how much, so there's no choice. Mm. You know, in, in, in my dreams, I remember, if you remember the first set of cell phones back in the 70s, 